What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about staging and the three tricks that I use for staging in good composition, which are the rule of thirds, the golden ratio, and leading line. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is, before we talk about the rule of thirds or the golden ratio or leading line or any of that stuff, we're going to simply talk about what is staging. Now, staging is very simply the placement of objects on screen. You may not think that that's very important, but it can make things look huge or it can make things look tiny. And when you're putting your art on websites like DeviantArt or like Twitter or something where your, your painting is one of so many paintings that staging is going to make the viewer's eyes look at your painting and it's going to make it stand out. For example, if you look at my original sketch layer, when it's dumbed down and small like this, it doesn't even look that doesn't even look that scary. I mean, it's just this little dude. So what I would so what I end up doing is I first would draw it at about this size. I wouldn't I wouldn't put it in its correct staging position until after I was happy with the piece itself, and then I would convert it to a smart object and I'd blow it up and I'd blow it up and put it in the correct spot on screen. The other thing that I want you to look at is my most recent painting finished. I'm going to flip through between blank and the painting, and I want you to think about what is the first thing that you look at when you when you look at this painting. The first thing. Now, I bet you probably look at the eyes first, and it's not because I'm a mind reader or anything. This was completely intentional because I thought about where your eyes were going throughout the entire piece. So, how do I do it? Well, I use two simple steps, and the simple steps are, first off, what am I showing, and what are my objects of interest? So my object of interest in this painting, obviously, are Soul Master himself. If you didn't know what this is from, this is from a game called Hollow Knight, and this is a boss called Soul Master, so I'll be referring to this character as Soul Master, and this character as Hollow Knight for the rest of the presentation, so be, be prepared for that. So the objects of interest are Soul Master himself and Hollow Knight. Nothing else is really important. And then the second thing that I do is how can I use staging to my advantage? So I know Soul Master is the big baddie boss, and throughout most of Hollow Knight, you're the small, you're the small, non-important person, and you're tiny, and you're always feeling like you're up against something bigger than yourself. So you need you need Soul Master to be the big the big bad of the of the scene. So, how can I use staging to my ad advantage? I am the cameraman. I put BE THE CAMERAMAN in all caps because why would you ever make a terrible shot because you have the unique opportunity to paint whatever you want. A cameraman can only take a picture of whatever he can in front of him and he's bound to whatever lighting he so happens to have at that particular time, but you can draw and paint whatever you want. So what you need to do is you need to paint good shots. You need to paint things that a cameraman would want to would want to paint. So for example, things that aren't golden ratio, leading line, and any of those staging principles that I listed at the top, just as a general thing, is I made his face and Hollow Knight the most detailed part of the painting. For example, if I zoom in here and I flip through some layers, you'll notice that he has rain on his face and that's nowhere else in the painting. I put rain on his face to add lots of detail. I also added a rim light on his face. So without these rain on face, his face blends in. But with these two, it adds extra detail to his face so you know that that's what you should be looking at. The horizon line can be seen right here along along the edge of this balcony that he is. And I put this horizon line extremely low on the page, and I also turned it into a Dutch angle. And a Dutch angle is where you take the horizon line, and instead of doing it straight, you end up... you end up tilting it like this. So the horizon line is no longer straight, 
but is instead a tilted line. And what this does is it creates extreme uneasiness on the page because it's not flat, because you don't normally get to see things like this. So it makes you feel uneasy, which is exactly what you want to feel because this is a evil, powerful boss. The other thing is that I put the horizon line extremely low to the ground. And what this does is when you have a low horizon angle, it appears as if you're looking up. So you're down on the ground and you're looking up at something. And when you look up at something, it feels bigger. So by adding this low angle and by having Hollow Knight himself look up, you can it makes this guy feel much bigger. That's why that's why when you look at just this guy by himself, he doesn't seem that scary or ominous, but when he is put into the context of the scene, he seems very big and he seems very scary. But the most important thing that I do to make to make the staging look nice is I use the three things that I said at the beginning of the video. The rule of thirds, the golden ratio, and leading line. So I'm going to go through those individually right now. <laughs> So the first thing that I want to look at is the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds is probably the easiest, but also the most important thing to understand about staging. So the rule of thirds is very simple. You put objects of interest on these three lines that I have. These three lines that I have. Let me erase some of this. You want to put objects of interest on these lines, and especially on the cross points. The cross points are especially important because they're even more important of a spot to place objects. But sometimes you can't always put objects of interest very easily onto the cross points, and that's perfectly fine as long as, as, long as the objects end up on the line. So as you can see... As you can see, Soul Master's eye, Soul Master's eye is on the rule of thirds, and also down here, Hollow Knight himself is also on the other third line, and this makes the piece look grounded. The whole thing about the rule of thirds is your eyes like the composition of the thirds because it gives it gives the eye rest. It can rest all in here because it doesn't actually need to look at something there. If there was something right in the middle of the screen, it causes uneasiness and you have to like look at it and you can't look away from it and it just doesn't look good. So that's cool. That's great. That does everything that you need it to do. But how do you get these third lines onto the page like I did? Well, it's actually quite simple. So what you got to do is you got to click on edit. Click on edit, go all the way down to the bottom to preferences, and then go to guides, grid, and slices. And on guides, grids, and slices, we don't care about the guides, we don't care about the slices, we're only concerned with the grid right here. So the thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to put grid line every, make it 100%, so it can be the pixel width of the thing can be the inches it can be any of that but we're concerned with percent because this will make it the rule of thirds for any resolution for any size of painting for any size of painting that you so do it'll always have the third lines correct so you want for every 100 percent and subdivisions three because thirds so you end up with the thirds and if you go to view and show under extras and you show grid you can now see the third lines, and that's all I did to get these red lines, is I just traced over where these grid lines were. So that allows you to see where the grid lines are, so you can find the third marks easily. Now, if you don't want to do all of that, and you got lost through all of those menu tools, you can simply press the crop tool, and if you try and crop something, it will always show the third lines. If you go up to here to this little grid thing, it'll show rule of thirds. And make sure that it's clicked on rule of thirds or else it won't show it. It'll show something else. And I, I don't even know what this is. And Jesus Christ. Anyway, so third lines, very simple. 
And then once you're done looking at the third lines, you can just press enter and the third lines of the crop tool will go away. And you can always uncheck the grid to get that to go away. <laughs> The second thing that I want to talk about is the golden ratio. Now, the golden ratio is a little bit more difficult than the rule of thirds, but not quite. It's still pretty easy. So this is the golden ratio line. So this is the golden ratio line. And um, so you'll notice that it's simply a spiral. It's not like any of the third lines. It's just simply a mathematical curve. And our eyes like this curve simply because it's spiral. You see spirals in nature all the time and you wonder why you think seashells are pretty, well, it's because it's a spiral, and humans like looking at spirals. It's just a fact. So if you put objects of interest along the spiral, your eyes will always lead to those things. So the spiral goes like this or like this. It really doesn't matter. But you can take a look at where my objects of interest are. So you see that it starts at the head. The head is the beginning of the spiral. It crosses this very detailed, this very detailed cloak snap. I don't know what to call it. It goes along, it goes along the cape, which is one of the more detailed parts of this piece. It does come off of the cape right here, but if you notice, I put a like cloud thing, I don't know, they're like souls because Soul Master's soul themed. So they're like little souls coming up from the sky. So I put a little soul thing right there to connect the golden ratio to the rest of the cloak. It goes down the rest of the cloak and you'll notice that it follows all of the soul clouds. It also follows, if you notice, it follows these spires right here. There's a spire there and there's a spire there. And you'll notice that they follow the curve as well. But most importantly, along the golden ratio, is Hollow Knight himself. So you can see Hollow Knight is on the curve, and you can see that Soul Master's face is also on the curve. So basically what happens is your eyes, no matter where you fall on the piece to begin with, will eventually find an object of interest on the golden ratio, and it will start following the golden ratio until, boom, you're back at the face again. Now, the easiest way to draw the golden ratio is not to do any sort of fancy preferences like I did with the rule of thirds. It's very simply just draw it. The, rule, the golden ratio itself is a very exact measurement. You take, you take a cube and you split it in half and then you split one half again and then you split that half again and then you draw the spiral around it. But... That doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be that exact. All you need to do is draw a spiral. Just as long as the spiral gets bigger as it goes out. So it's more condensed in the middle, and then as it comes out, it gets larger distance. So don't make it a consistent spiral, so don't do that. But just make sure that it gets bigger as it goes out, and you'll have yourself a nice spiral. <laughs> Now, the last staging principle is leading line, and in my personal opinion, leading line is the most difficult to understand. The way I put it is it's simply lines that the piece creates. So as you can see, you have the line of the horizon line, and you also have the line of the gesture of Soul Master himself. So as you can see, his body goes like this. This is specifically why I took the legs here. I put the legs higher up than these legs because if they were down here, say if the leg was down here, it would cut this leading line and it would no longer look good. So I put the legs up farther so that they would follow the curve of the leading line that goes up to the eyes. I also put the I also put the Dutch angle of the of the horizon line at a certain angle so that when perpendicular, so notice that this is a right angle, perpendicular, it will lead to the eye. And leading line doesn't necessarily have to be the lines that it creates, but also the perpendicular lines that it creates as well. So all of these, all of these lines for the fencing, all of the are just opposed 
are juxtaposed by this giant horizon line, and they all point up. They're literally arrows. Literally, literally arrows. You can look at them. They're arrows that point up to Soul Master, so that's what you look at. So this one's kind of hard to understand. It takes a lot more practice to um, make a piece that has good leading lines. S the simplest thing that I can say is practice gesture, because the these object lines that go along bodies are what you learn in gesture. So in gesture, you would draw the line of the spine or the body itself first, and then you'd be able to, and then you'd be able to make the body off of it. So you'd be able to do something like this. So as you can see, this creates the spine, this creates the arm, this creates that, and it me creates a much more readable, readable idea. So this character, even though I have no idea what he is, you can tell that he appears sneakily because he's crouched over and he's hunched. So all of these ideas can be learned easily through gesture. I must have at least five or six pages in my sketchbook that are just filled to the brim with sketches and form practice about gesture, and that's honestly not enough. You should make as many as you possibly can. If you don't know what to do one day, sit down and draw some gestures. You will always benefit from drawing gesture lines. In conclusion, all of these ideas, the rule of thirds, the golden ratio, leading line, my horizon line, the objects of detail, all of these things lead the eye to immediately go to the face right here, and to a lesser extent, Hollow Knight himself. And these are the most important parts of the painting. So, I think, personally, that I was successful in putting all of these, in putting all of these principal rules, because he follows all of them, and so does Hollow Knight, so you're able to look at the piece in the way that I wanted you to. And the other point is, say you go to the face, and say your eyes drift and you want to look at something else, as an eye would do, it would eventually just find another object of interest and would then be sucked back into the face. And this keeps the eyes locked on to your painting. And you always want the viewer to look at your painting for as long as possible. There may be a good painting, but say, say, what if there was a leading line that led right off the page? What if this leading line just left, and you were left looking this way? So say you found his face, and then you were just like, oh, and then you're gone. And you're no longer looking at the painting, and now nobody cares, and they won't click like on DeviantArt because they glanced past your painting, and they will never see it again because your stage sucked, and it just left the painting. So, staging is extremely important for good composition and better paintings. I hope this helped and bettered your paintings. Please subscribe if you liked this tutorial. Um, I have other tutorials on my channel. Um, visit my DeviantArt and Twitter for more frequent updates. So, thank you all for watching.